Hello, this is Keir from Zenforo, and welcome to the first of our Have You Seen video series for Zenforo 2.3. It's been a long time coming, and for various reasons that we'll go into later, 2.3 has changed quite a bit from what we had originally intended it to be, but it is finally ready to start showing you what's coming. A lot of the new stuff that we've been working on for 2.3 is related to performance improvements that won't be immediately apparent on first glance, but there is one feature in particular that's very obvious, and that is our new dark mode. So as you can see, Zenforo reacts instantly based on your system preference for light or dark mode, and it does so without a trip to the server of any kind. If you want to override your system preference and opt for the light mode while your system's in dark mode or vice versa, you can do so using a new gadget which is located at the bottom of the page near your style picker. And when you click it, you have an option right now for the system preference, or you can opt to override with a light or dark preference. And of course, because this is built into the core of Zenforo, it means that our responsive design component will carry these light and dark mode capabilities across to your mobile views, including the PWA that's shipped as part of Zenforo since 2.2. Now I should mention at this point that this is not the massive overhaul to the Zenforo style that we had intended to release with Zenforo 2.3. The work that has been done on the new style involves a complete reimagining of the design of Zenforo itself with a major focus on improvements to the mobile experience. We've also got a completely new set of templates, a reimagining of the way that style properties operate, and a new way of working with color in the system. However, all of those changes and improvements represent a fairly major backwards compatibility break between Zenforo 2.2 and the new style system. And when we started looking at how to migrate customers across using the upgrade script from Zenforo 2.2 into the new system, it became very clear that there really wasn't a sensible way to programmatically do it. And as a result, customers will need to make a lot of changes to any customizations they've made manually or by themselves. It also means that third party styles will have to be reimagined to work with the new system. As a result, we were faced with the prospect that a large number of customers who have made customizations would be unable to migrate over to 2.3 and take advantage of the new features that are in it outside of the style until they had implemented the work to update their customizations to work with the new system. And as a result, the decision was made to strip out the new style from Zenforo 2.3 and reserve it for Zenforo 3, where we will be announcing a major backwards compatibility break as far as the style system is concerned. The good news is that Zenforo 3 is not far off as the style is largely done. However, what it does mean is that all of the other new functionality that has been built for 2.3 will be available without this backwards compatibility break and customers should be able to migrate without much effort. We have taken some of the technology that's been built for 3.0 and backported it onto the 2.3 system. And one of those systems is the style variation system that enables dark mode switching. So what does dark mode have to offer for 2.3? Well, as you'd expect, the entire interface has been engineered to respond to the dark mode. So that includes menus and overlays and uh, everything else that uh, you would expect to be part of the Zenforo system. Uh, including, of course, the admin control panel, which now has a new dark appearance when it's turned on. And of course, that means that all of our menus and forms are fully modeled to take advantage of the dark mode. Now, let's talk briefly about how to actually get this working and about some of the fundamentals that make it work. I'll head down to the appearance system here and bring up styles. And you can see that under my default style here, when I edit it, I've got a new toggle for enable variations. Any style that has enable variations turned off will not do automatic switching of various variations. But assuming that you do have that turned on, then when we dump ourselves into style properties, then we'll find that some of these properties are defined as being variant. Now, right now we have a default and an alternate variant or a variation. Um, 
And I should point out that there is scope within the system to have multiple variations. But because we figured that at this point, most people are going to be using this for light and dark mode, we have currently limited the interface to just demonstrate that. But when Zen 403 comes out, we may well extend that and expose the entire system uh, to allow multiple variations. I should also say that the variations need not actually be light and dark. As you can see here in the style type, I could actually have two light style variations or two dark style variations. And the fact that the uh, variations can be defined as light or dark means that if you already have a style that is dark, then your default could be dark and you only need to define an alternate light in order to accomplish full scale switching. And in fact, those variations need not even be light or dark. You could have a red variation and a blue variation if you wanted to. But to make matters simple for um, the initial outing of this, we're going to assume that most of your variations are going to be based around light or dark. Now, let's take a look at these variations here. You can see that I've got my palette colors and on my alternate, I have essentially reduced the saturation and the lightness slightly to produce more muted and darker versions of the colors. I've done the same with the accent colors and I haven't touched the neutral colors at all. Then when I come into the basic color system, we also have variations for these. So whereas the text color for the um, default variation is using palette neutral three, in the alternate version, it is darkening palette color one. And you can see that the uh, color chip is representing that. So we essentially have white text on, let's go and find the content background color, a dark background uh, and going right down to an almost completely black page background. A thing that needs to be highlighted here that might not be completely obvious is that when you reference a named color in the alternate or a variant um, of the style, it's going to point to the variant version of that color. So here I have link hover color pointing to palette color one, but it's not pointing to the original palette color one, it's pointing to the alternate palette color one, which you can see represented by those values there. And likewise, the content BG that this is referencing here when it darkens it is not referencing the original content background color here, which is using color uh, palette neutral one. It's actually referencing this one, namely palette neutral three. You'll also notice that we're now storing these colors as hue, saturation and lightness. And if you don't know what that means, um, I would point you to the way that Zenfora has worked before, where we've stored colors in RGB format. So each color is a combination of red, green, and blue values. Now that works very well for a computer or even for a uh, graphic designer, but for a human, it is quite difficult to get your head around the fact that in order to take a color and make it lighter, you're actually going to have to change all three values. With HSL, hue, saturation, and lightness, you normally only have to change one value to achieve the difference that you want. So for example, if I wanted to change the lightness, let's go and find something in the palette here, shall we? If I want to go and change uh, this color here to be darker, then all I need to do is reduce the lightness component. And there we are, it has become darker. If I want to change the saturation and make it more gray, then I can reduce the saturation amount. And if I want to change the color itself, then all I need to change is the hue, not any of the other colors. So whereas with RGB to do what I'm doing right now, I'd have to be changing three values. Now I've just switched on development mode because I want to show you that as a style designer, if you go to add a new color property, let's make it a color value, then you have this new toggle for enable variations. And that means that you can switch variation support on for individual color values. So if you have a particular color that is immutable and you don't want it to respond to uh, various different uh, variations that are defined within the style, that's within your capability to do. 
Now I've brought up Zen 402.2 here because I want to show you the difference between the way that these style property colors are rendered between the two versions. If I inspect the uh, header here in Zen 402.2 and go and pick the uh, actual background, you can see that it's represented by this hex color and somewhere in the um, underlying code that is a reference to I think palette color 3, maybe 5, something like that. I also want to bring your attention to the staff bar here because that staff bar is defined as a darker version of the header color. But in Zen 402.2 all of that work is done at the server side. And so as a result if I go and change this color here to be uh, some sort of obnoxious color like that you don't see the change to the underlying color being reflected anywhere else. The, um, staff bar has not res responded um, in a um, sympathetic way to the change of the header. That's not the same in Zen 402.3. In Zen 402.3 rather than storing our colors on the server side we store them as CSS variables and not only that but we store them as individual components of CSS variables and so the entire inheritance tree that builds up these colors within your style is actually available on the client side. So let's take a look at the header on 2.3. Uh, let's just also switch this out of uh, forced light mode here. Right so here's the header and um, we'll just go and pick the element and you can see that its background is defined as the CSS variable XF Chrome BG. So I'll click on that and it will take me through to where that's defined as the individual component XF Chrome BG hue, saturation and lightness and alpha. I'm going to go and go through to the hue component and that tells me that Chrome BG hue is actually using Chrome, uh, sorry, the uh, palette color 5. So let's go and edit that and now if I change that to so let's say a hue of zero which is red then we can now see that not only has the header changed color but if I switch this back into light mode again and uh, go and <laughs> adjust the light variant because uh, that would have been a better demo wouldn't it uh, we need to go and grab Chrome BG palette color 5 hue, let's change that to 0 and now the staff bar has also reacted sympathetically to the change because I have changed the underlying defined palette color at the client side. So I can do the same with uh, anything else, let's go and grab this link and we'll see that it's defined as using XF link color, those are the individual components of the link color which are individually referencing the palette color 4. So let's go and edit palette color 4. Let's set it to something like 128 which is that uh, beautiful green. We'll make it 100% saturated. Well, we, no, we won't do that. Let's undo that. Oh, because I didn't put percentage in. And now anywhere that is using palette color 4 is also updated. So going back to the way that that staff bar just worked, let's go and uh, not do that. Let's go and take a look at the um, actual definition of that staff bar color and we'll see that it's using the Chrome BG but it's adjusting it with this negative 8%. So we've taken the function that is defined in the style which is to darken it by 8% and we're actually doing that in the front end on the client side. So if I were to change that, for example, to plus four, 50%, then we now see that uh, we've got that being represented. Let's uh, change that to something slightly less obnoxious. Let's do plus 5%. Oh, we need to add a space in there. And now we see that the staff bar has reacted according to the addition of 5% brightness or lightness rather than the negative eight. So I've really only scratched the surface of what we're going to be able to do with these individually componentized CSS colors that are exposed to the front end. But I hope that this was a uh, interesting taster of what's coming in 2.3. We're looking forward to showing you much more in the coming days and weeks. So stay tuned and 
we'll be back soon.